and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo. We're here at the South Park Center. I'm delighted to be joined with Michael with his fantastic film, Bad Day. Let's take a look at the clip. Yo, what's up? I'm playing right now. Hold on. You trying to go out tonight? No, I'm good. Why not? Because I don't want to. <laughs> Junior's being a bitch. I'm down though. Why don't you ever want to go out anymore? You're always alone in that room. I like being alone. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard being out in the big crowd. Let's go! Number one, baby! Uh, Michael, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the new filmmakers Los Angeles family. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I'm firstly just in awe of the film that you make because I'm so glad that you made it. Um, it's, it's a tremendous film and it's also a very important film, but for those that haven't seen it, tell us the brief synopsis. Yeah, it's a film, uh, thank you. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a film about mental, mental health and it's about bringing awareness. A lot of times we don't see what's happening behind closed doors or mm -hmm. sometimes just even what's right in front. But the film basically discusses the, the lead character who ends up going through feeling guilt because he feels that he could have been there for his best friend before he committed suicide. Yeah. And that's the story of what it's like, you know, that there's, there's little signs of maybe he, you know, he is dealing with something, but there's this, this stigma amongst men a lot of times that, mm. oh no, we're not going to talk about it. It's, it's yeah. no, it's fine. We'll just brush it. And then what happens It's too late. Yeah. So that's the story is basically saying, let's stop it before it's too late. No, I think this, you know, sadly is a, is, a, is, a, is a universal thing. I mean, I know several people, I'm sure you do as well, that have, have, have gone through, been through or heard about these experiences that, that exist every day of our lives. Where, where did the inspiration come for you, Michael, in deciding to turn this idea into a film? So it initially started from how I was feeling. So it initially started from me just writing poetry. I started writing poems. And then from there, I realized that it was helping me, just the writing process, kind yeah. of expressing myself. But I was expressing myself in solitude. It was yeah. just me, no one was really, you know, but it was helping me. So I realized I want everyone else to be able to know that, hey, everyone else is going through this, you know? Sometimes, like I was mentioning before, there's different versions of it, but you know, what helped me was writing. And so I wanted to put it out in the world, say, hey, talk talk about it, right? Yeah. Whatever it is that could help, just just be open about it, you know, because you don't know what it is that could be, save that life. The way you set the story up um, was very impactful because you made it, you know, it was these two, you know, roommates and it could have been anyone. It felt so real that if you didn't know what was going on behind closed doors, you wouldn't know what this person was going through, which is often the case of how it is. And, you know, obviously, it tends to happen to a lot of young men as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so you really showed like true authenticity of just how it naturally played out. I think sometimes we heighten circumstances where we sort of see it where it's almost magnified in a way that's a little bit Hollywood style, whereas you showed a real realism about this. Was that something important to you and how you wanted it to sort of be to be seen as a film? Yeah, I mean, j you mentioned it now. I wasn't thinking of that element of it. So when I was just filming, I just I was thinking of the story. Yeah. You know, so with that sense, there was um, it was just keeping it raw, keeping it real. There was no, you know, that was the the. I wasn't thinking too much of hey, let's make it glamour, or, you know, nothing because I just wanted to tell the story. Yeah. So that no, was, I did think you did that. I thought it felt so. It was almost like documentary film. I didn't feel. I think most times when you see it in films, they they do that. They make it this kind of glamour thing. You kept it right down the line real between two people which i thought was effective um great acting thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh how did you go about bringing the you know the cast part together and, and working together how was that for you i i initially so i actually had a, a good friend of mine um play junior mm -hmm. which is tyler parks and he he did really well and then i did the casting through actors access just found um uh, Katie Corbis to play Sky, which was amazing. Everyone brought, you know, it kind of helped bringing them on board, which was super helpful because it helped me make the project run smoothly. Um, but it's also, again, just kind of having that, having, again, like I say in Tyler, you know, he helped me out when I was transitioning from director to acting. He would be like, hey, relax, you know, you're not yeah. getting it. You're just relaxed, you know, you're acting right now, you know, 
there's not the sense of like, oh, I got to do this and do that, do everything. So he helped me out. So again, just that that team support, having that was super helpful. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, I think obviously as well, like when you've, when you've been an actor or you are an actor, you know, you're able to kind of see and direct in a, in a certain way that sort of is, is, is very helpful in a weird way because you can kind of really relate to the actors. And so I'm curious, as a director, how do you work with your actors? Um, definitely still, it's... Um, this is I just I just finished my second uh, project, but on bad day, I mean, like it's it's a learning process, right? Mm -hmm. um, I try to work with my actors the way I appreciate being worked with, um, and a lot of times it's very just um, maybe just sometimes it's like to the side or just kind of whisper, hey, you know, what's gonna help, you know? Um, just I also one thing that I found helpful is also just kind of having that talk before. Mm -hmm. even getting to filming, mm -hmm. just having that one-to-one, -one, just really understanding the story on both sides. And from there, just kind of, um, you know, I, I feel that the work is done before. Yeah. It makes it so much smoother when you're filming and you can Absolutely. trust the actor. Yeah, mm -hmm. most definitely. So obviously, you know, this, this film sort of, you know, really does concern like really, you know, big life topics. And I'm sort of curious, like put it out there, put in something that's a little bit personal as well to you, like, what did you want your what did you want people to take from your film what did you kind of want to give to your audience what did you want them to take from this experience do you think i want them to take that um i want them to leave from watching the film and saying hey i gotta maybe i have to make that call right now yeah you know maybe maybe i've been neglecting someone or or even maybe not you know maybe mm -hmm. it's just like hey i saw the film it's given me a chance to say, hey, let me reach out to this person, you know, um, because sometimes you just never know, yeah. you know, and that call could save someone's life. Absolutely. So it's just letting people know that you're there for someone. Yeah, I think your film really, did. I mean, honestly, I can imagine a lot of people see your film and they're like, I'm just going to check in on this person. Amazing. Or yeah. I have more awareness today. And I think that's the power of film. Like, you know, I was, I was amazed at how affected I was by the story and the characters immediately. And then, you know, obviously in this case, you know, it leads to a certain way in which we hope it's not going to go. But, you know, reality hits and sometimes we miss those signs or signals. But on the other side of things, being able to reach out, you know, as well, if you are the person going through that, that's also equally as important as well, isn't it? 100 percent. Yeah. And and that's sometimes that's the biggest struggle, feeling like you can't reach out. Yeah. So that's what I aim to do with the film saying, yeah. Hey, like, you know, maybe cause I know a lot of times for myself when I grew up yeah. um, or when I was in the service, people knew me as this, you know, I was always just chatty or funny. Everything was a joke, you know? And yeah, I was going through a tough time. So in that sense, it's like, Hey, I went through it too, you know? So you can reach out, you can, you can feel free to talk to me cause I'll yeah. be there, you know? Yeah. And so it was part of, um, you know, the, the, the veterans program as well, which, which was incredible and amazing to have a whole series of amazing people that have been in service. And, you know, on top of that, brilliant filmmakers. How, how was that experience part of that, that group of people? That was amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, um, it's amazing to kind of, you know, you kind of, you end up the biggest thing in the military is that camaraderie, you know? Mm -hmm. So being able to maybe, you know, eventually pick that up out in the outside world, having that camaraderie again as filmmakers, that's that'd be amazing, you know, and eventually, hopefully collaborate, make more veteran stories. Yeah, absolutely. Told. And maybe it doesn't, you know, I mean, listen, it's probably definitely not the stakes that you've had uh, in terms of, you know, being in service. But what was the biggest challenge you found in making the film in this particular film? The biggest challenge was def um, probably like I was mentioning before, the transition from directing to acting, um, because I did want, I didn't want to just rush it, you know, mm -hmm. because I, it was mine or like, oh, we have to get to the next scene. I wanted it to, again, be authentic and, and feel real. And part of that, you know, is the actor's job. So mm -hmm. I definitely just, I think that was the biggest thing. And, you know, having that support from the whole cast and crew helped so much. But I, I know, I remember a specific scene when I, uh, I was on the couch sitting down and I, I just couldn't, I couldn't get into it, you know? And then <laughs> um, I was, I was like, in my head so much but then it was just kind of taking that time to say okay look just settle down figure it out you know yeah relax so yeah that was the challenge but i think that it was helpful to have everyone around and in your experience thus far what has it been like we obviously loved it was very you know it's amazing having it with us at, at new filmmakers la what's your experience been like sharing it with an audience it's been amazing i amazing feedback um which i think that when i was first making it i wasn't expecting Mm -hmm. A lot of the feedback that I was receiving, which is amazing. I'm super, ha super grateful for that. 
uh, just hoping that, again, it is bringing that awareness of what it's really meant to do. And so, but it's it's been amazing to have the, you know, because obviously the more it gets around, the more people see it and hopefully yeah. just the word gets out. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what is next for you? Um, I just, I'm doing a lot of writing and, but I just finished on um, a second, uh, my second short. It's uh, it's called Lift. It's a comedy. So completely different from my <laughs> drama yeah. stuff. Um, it's a complete, it's a comedy about a, a bodybuilder who has to wear gloves because he's a hand model. So he's kept keeping a oh, secret. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's just, it's a little bit in the realm of um, how men don't speak up uh, because there's this, you have to be tough. Mm -hmm. So in that, in the gym world, there's mm -hmm. this, um, the lead actor, which I play, um, I have to wear gloves because I can't, I can't tell my best friend that I'm a hand model because oh. I feel that I'm going to get judged. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I yeah, love yeah. it. <laughs> my God. And there's a lot of hand model jobs in Los Angeles. It's there a real is, thing, hey, right? A, a bunch. I, I know yeah. a lot of times I'm doing a, just self tapes or something and I have to show my hands, you know? I know. So it's, I came up with that thinking, hey. <laughs> That's oh, it's, it's, a a real, it's a real thing. I it love is, it. It is. Well, um, it was a great discovery to know we both went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York together. So I know you've had good training. I'm just curious from everything we had in our training to where we are like today. Um, do you have any advice to give out to filmmakers out there that kind of want to follow in the footsteps of telling their stories? Advice, I would definitely say just. Yeah, just start, you know, um, because I know, for example, I recently, about a week ago, I downloaded my first, because I, I, my first thing I wrote was a play, but I mm -hmm. re-downloaded just to see, and it was not the greatest. But I remember at the time thinking, this this is amazing work, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that once you start every progress from there, you'll grow. So, yeah. but the first step is to start. Amazing, yeah, mm -hmm. so true. Well, listen, Michael, thank you so much for bringing Bad Day to us. I know that aside from being a piece of entertainment, it's a very important film with a great, important message. And thank you so much for sharing it with us. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thanks, Michael.